What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode. It is gonna be a very solo one, i.e. just me, myself, and I, Sig. Uh, Rongo's actually on a two-week vacation at the time of this recording and the time of like technically the next three episodes after this. Uh, he is on vacation. I'm abroad, so he is not here with me today, but that is okay because as stated in previous episodes, we've been doing a lot of solo episodes to kind of help with content creation, but at the same time, keep up without having to feel rush ourselves and giving ourselves a break throughout the year. Anyways, <clears throat> with that said, today's episode is one that I kind of technically done before, and it's it's quite simple and quite easy to go over. This one is Skull and Bones, the official release, which means it's the official review. Um, if you remember back in season one, I think it was, maybe the beginning of season two, last, around this time last year, um, I talked about Skull and Bones and the potential it has because it was still in beta and stress test, for, uh, stress test format and beta format and uh, a lot of other just you know, non-released, non-officially released. Uh, so they were private sessions that Ubisoft gave out codes to uh, select people and we were able to play it. And I did kind of like a, this is where they were situation at the time. And now we're officially here. Uh, Skull and Bones released in the February or middle of February. I always forget the exact date if I'm being honest, because I have a lot of stuff going on. I just forget about. So, Soul and Bones, there we go. February 13th, that's when it was. And so it's it's been about two weeks. It's actually, uh, by the time this episode comes out, which, yeah, it'll be having about three weeks. Um, so there's a lot of stuff's happening. And... The first biggest thing, of course, other than the fact that this game is a, finally a freaking release, is starting March 5th through March 26th of 2024, of course, they're going to kick off their seasonal gameplay. Um, so they already just kicked off Season 1, Raging Tides, and season Seasonal Gameplay officially kicks off on March 5th. So there's a lot of stuff, uh, bounties and new missions and new side quests and all that. So there's so much to go with this. And if I do another update on this, it will be part of a collective updates with other games that we will have reviewed either myself or Roggle or both of us. So but let's dive into it because as usual, here's the key points for today's episode is first off and like the most important of course is is this game worth its hefty price tag of 60 70 dollars on console or pc um, is this a game that you should pick up is this a, what's my opinion on it based upon what i've been playing for not only the last few weeks but in comparison to the beta the stress test and the alpha testing i've done uh, improvements where they could still improve upon versus what they've improved upon and the potential for the future of this game again i've said this numerous times during uh, game review sessions is this is a hundred percent purely my opinion i'm not being paid by anybody i'm not in cahoots or sponsored or partnered with ubisoft so it's just a raw opinion take it with a grain of salt like any other review and opinion whether from us or someone else this is just from our perspective and what we um feel like for the game so with that said let's get into it so if you remember from again season one season two when i've talked about this game i was i was and still very am super hyped about this game in its entirety and we have uh, so much potential going on right now um I'm going to kind of deep, not debunk. Uh, if you look up reviews for this, I guess let's put it this way. Let's start this way. If you look up reviews on this, you're going to see a lot of heavy mixed reviews and the ones that are on more of the negative side of the house 
and just kind of like, well, this isn't a great game because X, Y, Z. Majority of those I have noticed are coming from people who are, are or were hardcore Assassin's Creed Black Flag players um, back when the game was released about 10 years ago. And then the like positive reviews are a healthy mix of Assassin's Creed players and just kind of like your typical players as well as new players, uh, returning players, someone just looking for new content type. Uh, so with that said, the biggest takeaway people have in comparing this to Assassin's Creed, which one, it, it's not an Assassin's Creed. Yes, it technically started off as a sequel to Black Flag, but was quickly uh, pulled and canceled, for lack of a better word, and they repackaged it as a brand new game. Because here's the thing, when Assassin's Creed Black Flag came out, it was a great game. It was a pirate game. You were a pirate assassin, and there was a lot of mixed reviews on that one too. And the funny thing is, is when that game came out 10 plus years ago is the fact that a lot of people were mad that it was difficult to do certain things and that they kept dying in the water or they kept trying to board people's ship and it was just taking so long uh very very like what well, i would consider wishy-washy reviews on it because Again, Assassin's Creed is very much a black and white type game of either you love it or you hate it. There there tends not to be a lot of middle ground um, because people just have weird high expectations for that game. And it's a it's a lineage game. It's been around for a little, long time, been through a lot of consoles. So for when Skull and Bones came out, again, during beta, during stress, during the alpha testing, during all those testings, there was not a lot of negative reviews about everybody was super hyped. When the game officially released, all the trolls came out of the woodwork because they, of course, didn't have the the access to it in the stress test or the beta testing or alpha testing or whatever. So I'm sure it's partly doing that. But now that the game has officially been released, I've been seeing a lot of reviews of people, for lack of a better word, just bitching and complaining that when they're on their boat that they can't just do free roam on their boat when they're in a naval battle with other ships they can't board the other ships like you could in assassin's creed and this is this is their comparison every time is they can't freely walk around their ship like assassin's creed you can't board other ships mid battle like you could in assassin's creed you can't swim in the ocean or in the water like you could in assassin's creed first off but the ocean, like the amount of people who are complaining that you can't swim in the ocean, there's no mission to to swim around and do those type of things is ridiculous. Unlike Assassin's Creed, there's actually a bunch of creatures in this ocean that's constantly trying to kill you. And when you get started off in the game, you have a little rinky dink boat that's literally just a timbers strapped together with a rope and that's it. It's like makeshift sail type thing <clears throat> cast away you know and these sharks and alligators are attacking you and then you get an actual proper pirate boat or naval vessel whatever you want to call it um, and then people complain that you can't board the ships and free roam the ships cool like i don't i i can't seem to grasp the concept of why people want these two things other than like roaming the ship in black flag was cool i guess that time but it was a it was a button that all you had to do was push and you randomly would roam or you push and intentionally you'd roam on purpose either way that was a nuisance at times i didn't care for that because it was just a lot of extra tedious steps of oh i want to go dock here all right let me so to speak park my boat and then let me get off this wheel let me jump off the boat like it's just that stuff was cool to a degree but it wasn't necessarily they didn't improve the game it wasn't something like oh my god i could i could roam around my boat it's so amazing i i don't care about that type of stuff and i honestly think the majority of the consumers don't care about that type of stuff either because these three items that get such a negative review about them are so minuscule that people are just 
at this point just looking for something to complain about looking for something to be bad about it and that's cool it happens with every game we do it with call of duty fortnite apex wwe 2k games any madden or foot, uh, sports 2k game let's just be real uh, and so many more battlefield yeah but so people are just looking and that's fine cool can make that comparison and then when people are complaining about that you can't board ships you you can't in the sense of black flag where you pull the ships in and you literally ransack it uh that was cool again cool feature it wasn't one of those like was a make or break type thing back then but all of a sudden it seems to be a make or break issue for skull and bones but you can it's just it's fully cinematic now uh you toss the lines out you pull the boat in and then it's all cinematic like it's you not you're not personally doing you're not personally controlling the characters or the pirates to go and storm the vessel it's just it's a cinematic cutscene uh which again cool do i think they should enable that type of thing maybe down the line just for a cool little feature uh but at the same time i'm not but hurt over it like so many people are uh because it's just it's just easier and it makes more sense with the fact that your bounties your quests and everything especially bounties uh can expire and you trying to pull the vessel in disengage from the wheel jump into the other ship and have an actual fight scene like it's just it's a lot of time consuming um, and speaking of fight scenes you don't have other than naval warfare you don't have fight scenes i mean you're not you're not with you know sword and pistol duking out with other people um it's just naval warfare um, so this is very i would almost say this is a very simplistic pirate game um, especially compared to like even sea of thieves which is fully a different style of gameplay but pirate game still and you can swim you can board other boats you can ransack you can get off and fight uh enemies on the islands so could they introduce all that at a later point absolutely is it required for this game to be considered good or great no at least not in my opinion i don't think it is um not required that it's i don't think it's required but the thing with like the reviews on this is again very hit and miss to pan upon your style of gameplay so with that said i have personally been enjoying this i've been enjoying this game for over a year now over i think it's close to two years now i took the first stress test that was private and i couldn't review about it kind of talk to anybody about it um for basically an nda and still just not saying everything that happened then because i won't just in case uh but this game has made huge leaps and bounds of improvement from the original stress test that was completely private to where it is now it's such a massive improvement the storyline is amazing the quests are amazing uh the side quests and bounties they're good um some are amazing some are complete trash the one issue that still doesn't seem to have been fixed though from what i'm personally experienced is treasure maps where it used to be during a stress test and alpha and beta testing it used to be you get a treasure map and you follow the map basically it gives you a picture and you try to figure out where it's at and you find the marking dig it up however one thing that was an issue then seems to still be an issue now which is you can find the marking and it's for lack of a better word glitching out where you can't redeem the treasure um and that's kind of a pain in the ass in my opinion because again stress test alpha test beta test 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 it's just this seems like something that should have been fixed by now um, and hopefully they do because i had it or i've been experiencing it basically every time i log into the game i have at least one treasure map if not more that i can't redeem the rewards and kind of the only solution that sort of somewhat works is just going back to main menu and um, while you're on that island or that section of land the outpost is to go to main menu log back in 
and then just go back to where it was. Other times I've had where I did that exact same thing and the entire bounty and treasure map is is gone. Though it still shows up in my inventory. I just can't use it, look at it, or do anything with it. So definitely big like that's probably the biggest red flag for me is I I have all these treasure maps and I can't do much with them all the time because it's a shit show of whether or not it's gonna work. Uh, but with that set aside, and that's a big component, by the way, now the big component to this game, uh, because you do have to visit a lot of outposts and a lot of outposts do have some type of treasure map associated with them. So you have to find the treasure map and then go seek them out. Um, the naval warfare on it is amazing. I love just like earlier today before this recording, I was playing it for probably close to three hours and just on the seas you know, wrecking ships, rest, wrecking vessels, whether merchant, warship, battleships, whatever, well, just going to town and, you know, trying to be king of the pirates, so to speak. And it's just a lot of fun. Its movements are really easy. Um, I use higher sensitivity. I am on PC. Um, I'm, not on, I'm not on a controller. I'm not on a console. So I use keyboard and mouse. So um, I would assume the, the controller is like the actual physical controller, like an Xbox or PlayStation, would work honestly significantly better since you do have that joystick versus the mouse. But it's so much fun, and the fact that kind of like Grand Theft Auto, where you have a wanted um, aspect of it, you have the same thing, but with the clans and um, the association with them, whether it's like Sea People, Fara Clan. Um, you you wanda aguanda i'm butchering that one the rogues the merchants um, and so many more and it's just so much fun to kind of get on the seas and and raise hell so to speak uh, but at the same time you're trying to raise your level up so where these kings or these main officers don't find you and they wreck you because I stumbled into many, many ships who were like five, six, seven plus levels higher than me. And the, unlike most of the other clans, like the Far Clan, the Sea People, um, or the Rogues, whatever, um, the Campagne, which is a French one, they all typically will leave you alone unless you attack them or you're plundering one of their outposts, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, there are other ships that are solo being by themselves and they just need to see you and they're gonna start fucking with you um and they are typically several levels higher than you and just there to wreck your shit and which is interesting because if you die or if your ship gets destroyed you're given two options you can um go to port slash docks and pay to basically be revived there or you can pay to and by pay i mean silver which is currency you gain inside the game it's like free it's not paid for um or you can revive at this spot near the spot you died um which is a lot more money but if you don't have money at all then your voyage is over and you start over you have lost your ship and all your uh booty and you are literally just sol and you're trying to go back and get all of it because if you go back to where you got destroyed, you can pick up majority of your bounties and your booties that you dropped. Otherwise, you just lost all your treasures, um, which is kind of a pain in the ass at times. Uh, but anyways, it's it has that level of almost tactful gameplay that you you need to be cautious of what type of weapons you have on your ship whether you have like a single loader cannon, um, whether you have a long shot cannon, a fire a fire cannon, a mortar, bombarders, um, grapples, a giant crossbow, which I can't think of the proper terminology. You have just a lot of options and every ship you craft has a set number of weapon or cannon placements. So some can only have two, some can have three, some can have four. Some can have different levels, meaning like level one, level two, level three, um, on the on the boat, uh, top level, bottom level type thing. Uh, you have furniture that in, uh, increases and helps with gameplay and helps with uh, aspects of it. 
and there's a so much to it but it's a it's a lot of fun and you can't just like build any ship you want there is an art of uh, hunt and gather slash craft so you do have to go and harvest a lot of things and be able to craft specific items and refine them to more items where you can use higher quality you can't just craft anything you want you have to go find those blueprints which you find by uh destroying other ships you find them by doing plunders at outposts you find them just randomly through outposts um you can sometimes buy them off of merchants so there's a lot of like it's not just here you go you do have to unlock everything and it does feel like a grind at times but it's it's enjoyable it's fun and it doesn't get boring it just becomes tedious when you're like i need to i need i need to sail all across the map and it takes time because in order to fast travel unlike other games where if you fast travel from port to port location to location is typically free nah nah not in here it costs you silver and sometimes it's a lot of silver depending upon how far away you are from that location uh so like for example i was i think it said i was like five thousand meters away it cost me 400 plus silver to fast travel um so it's a matter do i want to travel fast and just do the cutscene and pay the 400 plus silver and be out or do i just want to sail majority of the time i will say like 70 75% of the time, I will just sail and uh, destroy ships along the way. Other times when I'm just like, look, I need to go there for a mission. I need to come back. Fuck this shit. Just fast travel. I have enough. Uh, so I've wasted tens of thousands of silver by fast travel simply for missions and quests because it was just it was just easier and conven more convenient. Um, but speaking like mentioning the plunder several times which is a great way to not only get resources and silver but it's a good way to get uh, blueprint schematics and basically what plundering is is you see an outpost that is controlled by one of the clans and you trigger a plunder effect and now that clan's trying to defend its outpost rightfully so and they send all their ships that they can. These ships can be merchants, uh, or uh, why can't I think of the bigger ones? Warships. They can be regalias. That's not the right word. Basically, a bunch of different ships that will attack you. And I can't think of the terminology now because my brain is having a freaking brain fart at this point, and it's messing with me. Um, but you are, you, you just have to defend your plunder session against them and it becomes quite difficult at times because you know there may be one ship there may be two ship you may have a whole freaking fleet that you're trying to defend by yourself now you can ask for help if you go into your maps and you press wherever your help button is for me it's f and you can call for help call for assistance and then other players can come join in on it now they do get a cut of your your treasure they do get a cut of the booty that you plunder so you know be aware of that um uh biggest you know thing i would say is fight within your means and your levels don't be like i'm a level four i'm gonna take on a level 10. no listen that's stupid and that's not how this game works level 10 isn't just slightly better than you no level 10 is astronomically better than you and will fuck your world up royally so be aware of that the higher the level the more difficult the ships and again when i say more i don't just mean like one to two i mean like a one to a hundred it's significantly different um they also have better weapons than you so keep that in mind as well so plunder just gives you a good way to get resources and complete other side quests that say you maybe you need un uh x amount of uncut gems or x amount of linens x amount of this or that and you have to you have to um find all of them and and uh resources they have to find all the resources and that's the quickest way is via plunder in my opinion uh, or you can just go wreck the ships because that's fine to do so uh but naval warfare in other words like i said is amazing i love it fantastic treasure hunting the treasure map is my only personal issue that i have with it it's, it's legitimately my only concern and issue with it because it does not work even close to 80% of the time even close to 70% um, 
Oh, yeah. I would say probably 70%. Okay, that may have been an over-exaggeration. 7 out of 10 times. But uh, it's just, it's not fixed. And the fact that it's been years since the stress test and all that, and it's still an issue. So that kind of shit bothers me. But is it pivotal key aspect of the game? So it should be fixed, but it's not. Catch my drift. Uh, more on like the, what can you do with your ship to make it unique or special? You can customize it. Again, you can add furniture that adds special effects to your uh, gameplay, meaning like faster firing, faster reload, longer distance, special perks and benefits, all that. But you can customize like the sail, the emblem, the patterns, the colors, and the like everything on the ship you can customize from the crow's nest down to the whole the hull 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 and it's just amazing but again you have to either find them buy them or do the season pass and so there's a lot of ways to customize that and it it gets really cool it gets really um fun to kind of just be selling the season you do see other players and like wow that your ship looks really cool it's very colorful or whatever um like the other day i just saw a level 10 player and when i say smash i mean completely obliterate but he smashed into a level two merchant ship and he was level eight and just smashed into that merchant ship just sent splinters everywhere it was gone done decimated you could not see it and then you could loot so you do you do play you do have the possibility and the opportunity to play with other live players whether it's like let's go raid this plunder let's go raid this outpost um, i have not done any type of pvp um i haven't seen anybody do it and as far as i'm aware that's not fully out there yet um Try and double check before. I don't. Yeah, there's no PVP that I'm aware. Player versus player. For those of you who don't understand what PVP means. Um, so yeah, as far as I'm aware, there is no PVP. Uh, to my understanding, I know they were talking about it. I had just have not experienced it. I'm pretty sure when it was in uh, alpha testing they did play around with it and you had to kind of like world of warcraft you can trigger yourself to be pvp so it may just be the fact that i haven't triggered it or it's just not fully available just yet again this game did just come out on the 13th of february so they may be uh, fixing something or they should be fixing things like game treasure map but they're definitely working on a lot of things so uh, they it does help to have those players along and again like if there's a plunder that you're struggling with just call for help and majority of the time you'll get somebody your same level or if you get really lucky like i did you get level 10 or 12 come in they just wreck house and they let you do everything and you can chat with them and kind of say thanks type thing so uh awesome side effect with that it's a big map you can travel um while you are selling the seas you do have to keep mindful of your crew's stamina and that means either not pushing the ship to its max because you have three three levels one two and three basically and three is you're like setting sail on the high seas as fast as possible and it just tanks your stamina really quick At level one and two you're kind of coasting through and doesn't destroy your stamina so you can either coast and it takes a lot longer or you can you know uh, crash through everything really quick but stamina gets used in order to replenish stamina either coast again or keep food on board and you can feed your crew as you're sailing in and keeps the stamina up as well um, speaking of feeding in like while you're sailing of course while you're doing naval warfare your boat takes damage you have to repair it and you need to have repair kits on on board with you um, and of course the more shit you're carrying the slower your ship is so do be mindful of that do be aware of that uh, but overall it's it's an amazing game it's a fantastic game i personally love this game um i don't agree with a lot of the negative standards that i see people talking about again the big three that i see all the time is you can't free roam your ship you can't physically board another ship and control your player and you can't um swim in the ocean 
and if those three are crucial if you loved one of those weird people that love that aspect of black flag don't waste your money on this game i'll just save you time don't waste your money on this game don't do it because you're gonna get it and then you're gonna piss and moan and you're gonna hate it and you're gonna regret spending the 60 or 70 dollars whatever it was that you spent on it so don't do it if you are not one of those people and you just simply like pirates and naval warfare this game is for you i promise uh, if you're also trying to get into like break into a different category a different genre of games but you still want like that fighting aspect of it i would say this is a good introductory um it's one of those things again though of d does it warrant the 60 dollar price tag 60 70 depending upon your console um, i do know for me i believe it was 60 dollars <laughs> It was sixty dollars. Um, I'm gonna double check that because now that I'm saying that out loud, I feel like it's more. I feel like it's one of the seventy dollar games. Let's see. Yeah, they do have uh, crossplay. Yeah, sixty dollars. So yeah, that was right. Sixty dollars. So they did conform to the seventy dollar price tag, but sixty dollars. Um, I will say this. I do believe Ubisoft Plus is on consoles. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's on console. There's a way to, to do it. Uh, Skull and Bones is not on Xbox Game Pass yet. Um, it may not ever come to Xbox Game Pass, to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen any word about it. Uh, so what I would recommend is if you're a PC player and you want to test this out, rather than spending the $60, Download Ubisoft Connect, which is Ubisoft's own uh, marketplace for games, and just subscribe. Eighteen dollars. It's eighteen dollars a month, seventeen ninety nine, and you get access to all Ubisoft games, all Assassin's Creed, all Skull and Bones. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, you get access to the new Avatar game and Mortal Phoenix Rising, all of Far Cry, Settler, Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy, Watch Dogs, and many, many, many more. So you get that again for seventeen, eighteen dollars, or sorry, eighteen dollars a month. You get that and play it for a month. Eighteen dollars is a lot cheaper than sixty. And if you decide you really like this game, then you can, you know post up do you want to just keep paying twenty dollars a month or do you want to you know fork over sixty dollars that's for the base model too because there are higher tiers on skull and bones and for eighteen dollars a month you do get the premium edition of skull and bones including your subscription so again i'm not sponsored i'm not a partner i don't get paid by them i just this is the things like i look for when i'm trying to justify do i want to spend 60 70 dollars 80 dollars 100 dollars whatever and one of them is is it on like game pass is it on ubisoft plus is it on some type of subscription where i can test it out for a month and if i don't like it cool if i do majority of the time i will i will you know purchase it or i'll keep the subscription like game pass just because there's many other games that come out on it uh, ubisoft plus i don't subscribe to too often um, it's actually how i play skull and bones right now i will subscribe to it for a month and by the end of it if i'm still hardcore playing skull and bones then i will likely just pony up the money and i will pay for the premium edition of skull and bones otherwise i'll let my subscription lapse and not continue um, but i have been enjoying this this is a game i've been wanting um so and i do play the assassin's creed games as well so i've been subscribed to ubisoft but i go through maybe like a three four months throughout the year where i'm just like eh, done i don't i don't pay for it so it's an opportunity like that and don't technically own digital games so let's not get into that so do i think do i think this game is worth the 60 dollar price tag the base game do i think it's worth 60 dollars um that honestly is a million dollar question i i am more leaning towards yes just because 
of its capabilities and where I foresee this game going. Um, especially they introduced PvP, an optional PvP, I will say that, and they fixed the treasure map issue. Um, it's worth $60 in its current state. Um, I think they could have taken a page out of Helldivers or Pal World and gone down to like a $30, $40 game and probably could have made a, a bigger killing. Uh, but they are, again, with it being on Ubisoft subscription, the Ubisoft Plus, um, dropping down that low would be counterproductive as the subscription is only $18. Why not pay $12 to $22 more to just buy the game? Um, but with that said, I, at its current say I would say no more than $40. Um, if it fixes the treasure map and introduces the PvP aspect of it, absolutely it's worth the sixty dollars do i think the the season pass is worth it no no i do not uh i don't normally do season passes to begin with uh, i've done like the last two call of duty ones and that's only because i had the the call of duty coins points whatever it's called their currency that you get from the battle pass i had enough that i can just keep doing it um, which is how I did Fortnite's too, is I had enough Fortnite dollars or whatever it's called to do season pass and not actually have to pony out real money. Um, Destiny 2 I used to, and these last two season pass have just been complete shit that I kind of stepped away from Destiny 2, so I don't do it anymore. Um, this is one of those, like, I don't think you need the season pass. Um, it, I just, I... I've not seen anything useful coming from it right now that I, I like. But again, March 5th kicks off the seasonal gameplay. So maybe with the seasonal gameplay kicking up and coming through, we'll see. Um, because you have March 5th through the 26th, you have Jaws of Retribution. Uh, from March 26th to April 16th, you have Anguish from the Abyss. So, I mean, for two months three months you're two months not even month and a half uh you have two seasonal events coming through um smugglers pass is what they call their season pass by the way um i get it i don't i would not waste your money on it i'm gonna be honest with you honest um but they are working on this very hard and they're clearly making leaps and bounds so i would definitely check it out again if you have the opportunity to ubisoft plus do it that way if you're a big fan of assassin's creed or uh, watchdogs or far cry uh see rainbow six division that type of stuff absolutely do do ubisoft because for 18 dollars a month you do get a all of ubisoft's catalog and they they have some good games out there um, it's a good way to kind of play new games and see whether or not you like it. Um, if you don't have it, I would maybe give it uh, when with April, I would give it to like April 1st um, and see if they do any type of spring sale, uh, if not summer sale in June. But I, I would not pony up $60. I wouldn't do it. I, I think $18 right now playing with it and seeing where I'm at in a month after or at the end of march to see if it's worth the 60 dollars at that point what uh patches and fixes they've came out with absolutely uh, reconvene at that point i will do a a bigger where are they at now type episode for a, a bunch of the games that i've reviewed lately um or i've been playing lately as well so we'll get into that later on um but with that said I hope this was information informational. I hope you got something from it and figure out whether or not you should do it. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. And that's all I can really say is I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been playing every day since this came out. Uh, I typically like giving a game about a week minimum. If it's an amazing game and I'm having a lot of fun, I will give it two to three weeks to see really where it's at um, gameplays wise. But the game is complete shit from the like loading it up it's really quick to tell and do a review on what needs to be fixed but always play through the story mode so just keep that in mind when we do these these uh review or at least when i do these reviews so 
the next game review we'll have will actually be um, for WWE 2K24, which comes out March 8th, 2024, or March 5th if you pre order the deluxe edition or higher. So we will uh, be reviewing that. I will be reviewing that and having that come out, I think, during spring, our spring break here, which is in a week, we can have something like that. And then the episode that should be coming out after this one is going to be another streaming episode, meaning uh, streamer episode, sorry, not streaming, streamer episode, and kind of help out more and do some more um informational aspect of it to help anybody who is looking to becoming a streamer thinking about streaming or maybe you're in that like entry level beginning stage where you're just like i i don't know what else i can do and we're just going to kind of do a little tidbits from our personal experience from what we do along with what i've seen and what i've been um studying um getting certified on to better help with all this so but until next time, everyone, thank you for listening in to this episode. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Two Guys One Gamepad. Check out our YouTube channel. Um, we do have two channels up right now. Of course, we have the traditional Two Guys One Gamepad, and then we have Two Guys One Gamepad Gaming Moments. Um, that one is full of our third, or I shouldn't say full because we're ju we just started. Um, is going to be full of uh, gaming moments and clips and highlights from when Rog and I play on Thursday nights. So you'll be able to catch either matches or full on sessions throughout the month. Um, and then we have a third one coming out during WrestleMania 40, which is April 4th, I believe is the date in one month. And of course I can't pull my calendar up. Yeah, April 6th. Yeah. Um, we will have a YouTube channel for sure, um, possibly a podcast. YouTube channel for sure, and it's called Ring Rage Report, and it will be covering all things professional wrestling. So go check all those out. Follow us at 2Guys1 Gamepad. Check us out on Thursday nights. Um, you can find Roggle at twitch.tv forward slash roggle r-a-h-g-e-l and then of course you can find me underneath cyber merc sig c-y-b-e-r-m-e-r-c-s-i-g -E -E um everywhere twitch facebook youtube kick so go check us out join us uh, i randomly stream throughout the week roggle streams on thursdays for sure so with that said Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next episode. Until then, everyone, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next Two Guys One Game Pad podcast episode. Take it easy.